Well, this guideline was developed because complex spine surgery, which we defined as an instrumentation at three or more levels, is associated with significant postoperative pain and effective pain control after this type of surgery can affect early postoperative rehabilitation. In our trial, we defined uh, uh, complex spine surgery as an instrumentation at three or more levels. So the aim of our guideline is to provide clinicians with an evidence-based approach to pain management after complex spine surgery. Recommendations for spine surgery have been published before, of course, but those systematic reviews were not specific for complex spine surgery. So in all those reviews, all types of spine surgery were mixed and included. Uh, for example, a sim single laminectomy was, was included and not all types of uh, complex spine surgery. And secondly, the published reviews do not critically evaluate the available evidence similar to our prospect approach. So our methodology of the prospect group is unique in that it aims to synthesize all the clinical evidence while considering also the risk and benefits of the interventions, as well as taking the study designs into account. So specifically, the group seeks to determine the relevance of study interventions in the current perioperative practice and critically evaluates the baseline pain treatments. So in our case, we conducted an extended review of the literature and all the results were assessed by two individual researchers. The results were often discussed by our team and then we were presented to a team meeting by the whole prospect group in a meeting in London. Recommendations uh, for pain treatment were given when at least two congruent studies supported an intervention and also we graded all the recommendations for pain relief with a score from A to D according to the overall level of evidence, the consistency and the source of evidence. Well, our group decided to recommend the use of paracetamol, uh, COX-2 specific inhibitors and NSAIDs in the preoperative and intraoperative periods. Further, we recommend an IV infusion of ketamine during the operation, as well as the use of epidural analgesia with local anesthetics alone or with the combination of opioids and local anesthetics. Although there was procedure-specific evidence for in favor for intraoperative methadone, it is not recommended by our group as it was compared with shorter acting opioids and due to its limited safety profile. There was also limited evidence, so no two studies supported the intervention for local wound infiltration, intrathecal and epidural opioids alone without local anesthetics, an erector spinae plane block, a thoracolumbar interfacial plane block, the use of IV lidocaine, IV dexmedetomidine and gabapentin. So for all those interventions, there was only one study supporting the, the pain intervention. So no two congruent studies were found. We found no evidence at all for the use of uh, glucocorticoids, muscle relaxants, clonidine, of the use of a specific surgical minimal invasive technique.